What's going on, Washington fans? Welcome to Taking Command with Josh Taylor here on the JTFB YouTube channel. I appreciate everyone who tuned into the live show last night. Had a blast breaking down all of the exciting news on day one of free agency. So go watch that video right after this one if you haven't already. But it is day two, and as of 6.50 in the afternoon on Tuesday, Washington has not signed anyone yet, but that is okay. There is still some Washington news to talk about today. And it started out with Taylor Heineke getting signed by the Atlanta Falcons going for a two-year up to $20 million. And at first, I thought it was, you know, two-year, 20 mil, like flat, like 10 mil a year kind of deal, but it says up to $20 million, you know, depending on how much he starts, he plays, if they make the playoffs, whatever. There's a lot of incentives in that as well. I'm sure he has some Jordan shoe deal worked in there somewhere, you know, but um, I knew Taylor was going to be gone. And that was something that I talked about on the show last night, the live show that I was just telling you about was that I had the feeling from what I've heard and just you know kind of seen floating around that Taylor Heineke was not going to be back. I talked about how this is you know Eric Bieniemy's new offense. The reason why Taylor was here last year was because he did know the offense that was Scott Turner's and you know that was kind of like the safety blanket for us. And you know fan base loves him to death, hates to see him go. Um, but I just knew it, it was a, a business decision because he, this is a new offense. And secondly, it's Sam Howell's QB one. And you know, for a, a fact, the second he has any kind of mistake that the Heineke hive is going to come at his neck. It's just a toxic relationship. Like it's just bad. Like I still remember Ryan Fitzpatrick getting hurt and just laying like dead on the field and fans are literally chanting Heineke in the stadium. Like I just, it was awful. And it's nothing against the Heineke Hive. It's not nothing against Heineke or the fans, but you just don't want that. Like you have, it has to be a clean cut, just cut ties. Sam Howell's QB one. We're still waiting as of right now to see who Washington's going to sign as that backup quarterback to come in. Um, you know, like I said, I think it's going to be a vet. I don't think we're just going to draft another guy and then have like Jake Fromm be quarterback three or whatever. Um, but I'm still waiting, as you know, Jacoby Brissett. Like I said, I talked about that last night too is the guy that I have my targets, uh, you know, set on. Uh, Sam Darnold's gone, didn't really want him. Um, Andy Dalton just went to Carolina not too long ago. Um, so the list is getting shorter for these veteran quarterbacks, but Jacoby Brissett is still my number one target. And watch, he'll get signed somewhere tonight. Hopefully it's us. And if it's so, I'll break the news. So subscribe, like if you enjoy what you watch, comment with your thoughts on everything I talk about. Um but yeah, so Taylor Heineke, he's in Atlanta, back home in Georgia. I thought that was a great fit for him. You know, personally, just going back to where he grew up, that whole area, great for him. Like, happy for him. Hope he thrives. Love Ritter, too. I think it'll be interesting. We play them this year, too, I think, later on in the season sometime at home. So that'd be cool. Just another storyline to watch uh, for this season. So Heineke to Atlanta. Um, and then soon after that, I don't know, around like lunchtime, I think it was like 12, 1 o'clock, Washington announced – that we have moved on from John Masco, offensive line coach, who has been with Ron Rivera since the Carolina days. Um, you know, a guy that's been around for a long time. You know, um, for me, it was a really weird timing that this happened because, um, you know, Eric Bieniemy came in, they made some changes, then we started signing some guys, start making some changes on the offensive line, and of course, I don't think we're done yet. Um, I think Eric Bieniemy like had a hand of getting, you know, uh. Nick Gates, and then, of course, obviously, Andrew Wiley coming over from the Chiefs. I, I think that's all Eric Bieniemy, you know, picking those guys and pursuing those guys. Um, so I'm not sure, like, what, you know, forced this this change to happen. And I don't think it's a bad move because our offensive line has been bad, and it's something that Ron Rivera and um, Mayhew talked about in their end-of-the-season press conference was um, – that they need to figure out what's going on with the offensive line, why they're always hurt, why they're not performing like they should be. Um, and we all know that changes had to happen. So I'm not saying I'm against it. I just think the timing's kind of weird. Um, but I think that Eric BNB and Ron Rivera have someone in mind that they want to bring in that they are actively pursuing throughout this, you know, free agency period of changes of players and also coaching staffs. It seems like, you know, the coaching changes are pretty much done. 
Um, but I think you can still bring in a guy right now, whether it's someone in college or, you know, uh, another position coach for another team and bring them on over right now. Like, I, I don't think it's too late. Like you still have the free agency. It's still going on. And then you have the draft, obviously is going to be huge. Um, so I thought the timing was weird, but honestly, I think it was a necessary change because of how our offensive line has looked lately. Um, but yeah, we are building that offensive line, but we need to perform to the best of our abilities as well. So kind of weird, didn't really see it ha- like coming today, but at the same time, kind of glad it did happen because we did need a change. Um, also, J.D. McKissick has been released, um, which I did see coming, and I will touch on it a little bit more. Um, but obviously they, they said they released him due to, um, physical, like not being able to pass, um, like the physical, whatever they call it. Um, but the thing was with his neck and like how bad it was, um, it was concerning. Like I didn't think like he was going to be able to play again. Um, I don't know if he's going to keep playing football. It was a really scary like neck injury, and I think he's had more than one. So it's just adding up for J.D. McKissick, which sucks because he's had some really good moments for us. Um, had some big plays like the one, obviously, that jumps out the one uh, against Atlanta. Um, and he's not that old, honestly. You know, Buffalo really wanted him last year. He stuck with us, so you love him for that. Like, he wanted to genuinely be here. So, yeah, it absolutely sucks. Um, and you honestly just hope for the best with his health and hope that he's okay. Um, and then also they have uh, tendered a qualifying offer to restricted free agent Jeremy Reeves. Um, from what I've heard, they are looking to get a long-term deal done like soon, like within the next few days if not by like tomorrow. Um, so keep an eye on that too. So another fan favorite that wants to stay here, obviously made his first pro bowl, the best special teams player um, in the NFL last year. And rightfully so all pro like Jeremy Reeves, like I, I'm ecstatic to have him back on this defense um, and special teams, but I want to see what that long-term deal looks like. And I he had a market. Absolutely, he has a market as a safety and as a special teams player. So, looks like they're really trying to get that done. So, I'm trying to stay up to date on everything. So, sorry, I keep checking my phone. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Jeremy Reeves looks like a long-term deal is going to be getting done within the next few days. So, keep an eye on that. But back to the J.D. McKissick thing a little bit. I said it, and people were mad at me talking about the by John Robinson pick. I'm not going to talk about that more, but I'll talk about the Austin Eckler rumors and how Washington might have interest in Austin Eckler. And uh, I, I don't think it's a debate that Austin Eckler is better than Antonio Gibson. So for me, like why can't we as a fan base see Antonio Gibson as like that running back three kind of guy? Like that's what he does like as a receiving back and as a running back, um, like that's like genuinely what a true RB three is. When you think about that guy that can line up in the slot, the guy that can do the wheel routes did what JD McKissick did. Antonio Gibson fits that his contract is up next year. We're not going to pay him. That's obvious. Austin Eckler can be running back too. Uh, like I said, he scored 18 touchdowns last year when we, as a total team scored 24, he had 13 rushing five receiving last year. I don't think he's going to be worth much. The Cowboys just got Stephon Gilmore for a fifth. Jalen Ramsey only cost a third. And uh, just some more stuff. I just chat any news. And I mean, it's showing like it wouldn't take much to get Austin Eckler and he's not going to be that expensive. So if you have a little bit of leftover money, if it's a guy that can produce and and score some touchdowns for you throughout the season and help out a rookie quarterback. And you have Brian Robinson just bruising guys over. And then you have that shift to your guys and Austin Eckler. Like, I don't see the the hurt in that. If Stefan Gilmore is going for a fifth, Jalen Ramsey is going for a third and a mid tight end. Austin Eckler for like what? I, I would trade a fifth for Austin Eckler. I honestly would, because we're going to, we're drafting a running back. If not, and I'm fine with that too. Whether it's a Tajay um, Spears in the fourth or fifth round, um, 
or like Aaron Gray, someone like that. This, this is a really good running back class. Like Washington is in the running back market. I'm not sure why fans are having such a hard time understanding that and being so mad about it. I get the the position value. Same with linebacker. Um, I think we need more linebacker stuff. You know, too. I I want a legit option next to uh, Jamin Davis. Uh, like either a vet or we get a pretty darn good guy in the draft. And this is a good linebacker draft for me personally. Um, like that first four or five guys on my board. Um, but Washington is in the running back market. And I hate to tell you that if you don't like it, but they are. And there's multiple people that have said that, including Logan Paulson. Um, he was on a show recently. I forgot which one it was on, but he was talking about like how Washington definitely is. And we've met with running backs at the combine and the um, senior bowl. So, just get ready. Washington's going to get another running back. Uh, Jonathan Williams, I don't think, is going to be the third string running back. Well, they didn't re-sign him for that reason. Um, so, yeah. Other than that, within the NFC East today, like I said, Stephon Gilmore going from the Colts to the Cowboys for a fifth-round pick. I think it was their comp pick. Big news. So, they got their starting corner. Opposite of Trayvon Diggs. So, you have Trayvon Diggs and Stephon Gilmore, two corners that Terry has toasted in the last few years. Um, if you remember the Stephon Gilmore one last year against the Colts, oh my God, the Taylor Heineke heave, which is like his finishing move. Um, and Terry McLaurin just being Terry going up there and getting that ball. And then we know what he's done against Trayvon Diggs over the last few years. You know, the rocking baby, the too small. I mean, it, it's Terry. Terry going to cook. Terry's going to get his. So I'm not worried about it. Um, the Eagles sound like they're, actively shopping Darius Slay from what I've heard um, from multiple people. They are reaching out to teams about Slay. Like, hey, this guy is on the trade block in case y'all forgot. So I think the Eagles are trying to actively move Darius Slay. They re-signed Bradbury. Uh, he took a pay cut to, to come back to Philly. So kind of bold considering all the people that they've lost um, on their defense in the last two days. Uh, kind of bold. Bradbury's going all in. He's staying in Philly, though. Respect him for it. Um, but like I said, Darius Slay is probably going to be moved within the next two or three days from what I've been hearing. Um, so keep an eye on that. Outside of that, the Cowboys also have Van Der Esch coming back. Big time for them. I think it was like two, two years, 11 mil, which is really good for them. Um, they're probably going to lose Dalton Schultz more than likely. Um, I would not mind kicking the tires on him. I don't think he's available until tomorrow, technically. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. And then speaking of tight ends, Darren Waller gets traded once again for a third round pick to the Giants. And and some Washington fans I've seen them be like, holy smokes, is Darren Waller. And then I've seen some like, uh, eh, he hasn't really done much. First off, the Raiders are just as dysfunctional of an organization as us. They draft terribly. Their scouting department sucks. They just don't make smart moves. And this is this is on top of the not making smart moves up there with getting uh Clinton Farrell in like the was a third overall pick. Like they just they awful. Awful, awful, awful at building a roster. Darren Wall is one of your best pieces. The best thing they've done is get Devontae Adams, obviously. And Jimmy G has him, and he has Josh Jacobs, but you're trading Darren Waller for a third-round pick? I don't get that at all. Uh, so that's big to me for the Giants. I think he's going to be great. That's exactly what Daniel Jones needs. You know, um, Bellinger was really coming on for the Giants. They like him a lot. But Darren Waller and then Bellinger as tight end, too, that's a really good pairing. for I, Like, Daniel Jones – is a guy who's going to depend on his tight end a lot. He's going to he's going to be like Jimmy G with what Jimmy G had with Kittle. Like he loved Kittle. You're going to see Daniel Jones feeding Darren Waller a lot. So I think it's definitely worth it, you know, if he's healthy. The thing that sucks for him is he just married Kelsey Plum um literally days ago. She plays for the Las Vegas Aces. He was playing in Las Vegas. You know, they're in the little honeymoon and they're like, "Hey, by the way, we just traded you." all the way over to New York. <laughs> so I feel sorry for him. Um, but still, nonetheless, it's, it's business. Um, but it's a good pickup for the Giants. So been a pretty steady day with some news. Um, that's pretty much everything that's happened with Washington and the NFC East, though. Obviously, if anything happens, I will keep you all up to date on it. So hit that subscribe button and stay tuned on Taking Him with Josh Taylor. Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'll be doing some more live shows. It was a ton of fun. 
Really enjoyed it. Let me know what y'all want out of the channel because a lot of things are popping off. Like I said on Twitter, also follow me at Josh Taylor FB. You can see it at the bottom of the screen there somewhere. Uh, hit 5K today on Twitter. I was trying to do that before the draft, and we crushed it before then. So shout out to everyone who follows me. Uh, appreciate it. You know, out here grinding, trying to uh, just make it out here in this tough industry. But hey, love this team, love this game, love free agency. This is like Christmas for a football. So stay tuned. Still got a lot of crazy stuff coming on the channel. So I'll see you on the next video. Peace.